all the people in the world today, there's always someone getting a raw deal. I'm your new host, Anthony Castaneda. This is Raw Deal, and these are their stories. This deadbeat person turns out to be a law enforcement officer. There's a fire! Get out now! We were at number two with our million seller right under the Beatles. She was saying, I'm going to get you. I'm going to screw you so bad. There's nothing but smoke and flames coming from the, that part of the building. I haven't seen a penny off of the sales. It pretty much ruined my clean record. Oh my God, there goes everything I, I own. The industry swept us under the rug. I got the raw deal, pal. That's what I'm battling right now. That's my raw deal. I've had nothing but raw deals. This girl loves classic cars. Let's find out what happened. How you doing? How you doing? I'm Anthony, host of Raw Deal. How you doing? Mind if we come in, tell us your story? Come on in. Let's come in. Right, Tara, I'm Anthony, host of Raw Deal. How you doing? For telling your story today, you're gonna get the official My Raw Deal t-shirt. Wear that with pride. So uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm 26 years old, and I'm originally from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Okay. I transferred with my job, and I moved to Orlando just to try to, you know, better myself and my situation, and that's basically it. So tell me about your raw deal. What happened? Well, it all started when I was in Tallahassee. Okay. I was attending school there, and I had ran into a large amount of money, and it's always been my dream to go ahead and fully restore a classic car. So you went about getting a car, you purchased right. the car. Right, I went through, you know, the measures to find right. a car that was not so beat up, but, you know, I ended up finding something that was okay that I could start from. Sure. So I had it towed to a mechanic shop. You know, at first I really didn't do a lot of research about the shop, right. but later then that was, I found out that was my mistake. Yeah. So I had it towed to the car shop and I had money put down. The mechanic told me, well, you need to put this amount of money down for us to start this and order this and order that to go ahead and start the process. Okay. So I gave him a total of $5,000 just to start. Right. Now, did he ever give you any kind of receipt for that? We signed an agreement, mm -hmm. but it was, it was all broken down. Right. It was all broken down and he wrote me a receipt for a transmission and other things but not for the $5,000. I didn't even get a receipt for that when okay. I dropped the car off. So then once you gave him the money, what happened with the car? When I gave him the money, I kept going back, checking up on him, right. asking him different questions about, well, when is this gonna start? When, is the, when am I gonna be able to see results? He gave me the runaround. You know, we had to order this. Fully restoring a car takes time. You have to do this and do that. So not really knowing a lot about cars, I was like, you know, okay. And I was young, I was younger. So I'm like, okay, you know, trying to understand them and give him the benefit of the doubt. Did you ever see any work start to be done? They or? spray painted the under the hood to right. make it seem as if it was something done. And at that time, I myself really thought that they were making steps towards getting the job so done. So you really didn't have any kind of suspicions at this point. Not you were at just that time. kind of going along with it, figuring right. it'll get done when it gets Not done. Not at that time. Right. So maybe once a week, I go by there, you know, I ask questions, mm -hmm. check to see if parts came in and what was going on. And, you know, it was still nothing. He's giving me the runaround. So one time in particular, I went back to the shop. And right. when I went back, nothing was there. Nothing no at all. cars. No equipment, no lifts. So it was an empty It was an empty mechanic space. shop. Right. Nothing at all. Everything that I saw when I originally went to tow the car there it was gone. Was gone, completely gone. And so at that point, you, some red flags came up. Right. At that point, I went home. You know, I did a little research on the computer. You started your own investigation of right. what to do. Right. I and investigated. How to out what's you know, going I on. wanted to get my money back. I wanted to get my car back because I, I, I mean, thought I was, you know, something right. was really going on at that point. So I did my research and I looked them up on the internet and I saw where in the clerk of court's office, he had um, different lawsuits against him. At that time, I didn't know exactly what it was about. 
I came to my own conclusion that it That's was probably something cause. to do with mechanic, yeah. you know, with what he does. So I got his address and I went out to his address and all the cars that were at the shop was just relocated to his house. So they were because just he had scattered a, across. The he had a decent amount of land where right. he was living. So it was cars, you know, he had a dog out there. So your investigation was going well. You found the guy, you found your car, you found everything. And so you figured you'd get your car back at this point, right? Right. I figured everything was okay, you know, but it wasn't. Nothing was done and I had asked him, well, what happened? You know, you haven't called me, you got my car, you got my money, and nothing is done. You know, all the stuff you told me that you were doing is not done. So when did you get lawyers involved? After, at that point, when I came to his house and everything was relocated there and I saw nothing still had, you know, no, no, no end to it. Done. You know, he's just giving me the runaround. I went to the courthouse and I paid a couple hundred dollars to go ahead and get in the court and let the judge hear you know, hear my side so right. that I can make an attempt to try and recover my money in my car. That's fair. So when we went to court, the judge hurt me, the judge hurt him. He ended up awarding me the money. He told him that my car needed to be returned. Right. And I told him that you don't have to tow it to me. I'll tow it myself. At that point, so I just you wanted didn't my want car. the tow company involved at all? At that point, you were just going to do it on your own? No, I wanted my person that I picked. Oh, you wanted your tow company. My, you didn't yeah. want his tow no, company. No, I didn't want him because he had a tow company. Right. He had a tow truck. You, you don't trust that him he at this owned. point. You right. want to do whatever. No you, way. Right. So I wanted to hurry up and just get it out of his possession. So you, get a, you get a hold of a tow company and you tell him, I want my car towed and you have them all ready to go. And then right. what happens? I have them all ready to go. And we actually drove out to his house. Right. And the tow truck guy is a witness to it. He was there with me and we get there and it's nothing. Nothing. And the tow truck guy is looking at me like, "What? You know, what's your deal?" Right. And the last and time like, you were there, there it's was nothing here. Stuff. There was, you know a, there was furniture. There were cars. It was cars here. You know, it was furniture in the house. It was a dog. Everything you could just look out into a field in the back of the house. It was like nothing. So now so, you didn't see a dime of that money back, did you? No. So you're this out point, of five grand. Five grand. You're out of my the car, car, my time, the money I put in to actually for the judge to hear the case right. but I had to pay for them to so go you had to put even more claims. money into it to get your money back. Right. And I still and you haven't, still got haven't my seen money a dime. Yet. You know, and they said you can do different stuff like garnish wages and stuff like that, but they can't I can't get a find him. Them. I can't find them to do anything. Well, so what's this guy's name? Wade. Wade. His name is Wade. He's a classic car guy. Yeah, supposedly. <laughs> Monetaire, I just want to thank you again for telling us your story. No problem. And now it's your turn. Go to MyRawDeal.com now and vote for which story you think got the rawest deal. Do you think it's story number one? Do you think it'll be story number two? Or how about story number three? The choice is yours. What are you doing? Vote now. Alito Towing is on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We are certified towing and recovery specialists with over 10 years experience. We offer light, medium, and heavy duty towing. All of our operators at Oviedo Towing are PWOF certified and fully insured. You know it, we'll tow it. Call Oviedo Towing at 407-671-8818 or visit the website at ovidotowing.com. Tow your problems away today with Oviedo Towing. Hey, what's up? I'm Sean. I'm on the camera department for My Raw Deal, the reality show. Have you ever had a raw deal? Well, we want your story. So go to MyRawDeal.com and submit your story today. Who knows, you might be the next big winner. We're here at the SWAT Training Academy. We want to give them a special thanks for letting them use their facility. If you have a business and want a free shout out on Bright House Networks, contact Jason at MyRawDeal.com. We're here with LaVon today, and LaVon, for telling your story, we have this uh, 
official Moral Deal t-shirt for you to wear. Awesome. You wear that with pride. Thank you very much. No problem. Nice graphics, guys. Definitely a good shirt. So, Levon, tell me a little sure. bit about yourself. Oh, well, I'm originally from uh, Denver, Colorado. I've been here in this lovely state of Florida for about two years. I'm a college student, Metropolitan State College of Denver. So, yeah. Very cool. How old are you? I'm 30. 30 years old. Yes. So what brought you to Florida? Well, my parents are here. My sister's here. They kind of moved over, flocked over, so I decided to come over. Very cool. What's your raw deal? Tell me what happened. Well, to start off with, I was staying at a place for, I'd say, about a year and a half. And next thing you know, I wake up one evening. Somebody's pounding on the door. I'm like, what's going on? I was dead asleep. And I go to the door. I'm like what's going on there's a fire get out now get together get your stuff get dressed get out i'm like this is really odd there's no fire alarms going off i'm like all right so gather my stuff i go out it's like the titanic sinking is what this reminds me of because there's no lights on in the hallways at all right. fire alarms not on people running around just pandemonium chaos people are just screaming and pounding on doors there's lights from the firefighters officers i look to the northeast there's nothing but smoke and flames coming from the, that part of the building and this building's about 450 rooms so it's a pretty big place now, did a fire alarm go off or anything like no. that no no and normally the fire alarms were really good about going off so that's why you know everybody was like this is an Start, active yeah. something's really wrong with this so it took the firefighters to get there about six minutes, according to the preliminary report that I received. Where was this? It was a hotel, right? Yeah, yeah it okay. was in Kissimmee, Florida. So there was a lot of tourists there, too, right? There was a lot of different yeah, groups of people, all okay. kinds. There's, it was also extended stay, so I was one of the people You're that the stayed there. Stay. Yeah, I mean, I lost everything. I lost you about... You had all your personal belongings? Yeah, I lost my records, you know, I DJ on the side. I lost, you know, valuable things, just collector's items, you know, autographs from people that I've right. met. Just everything gone, and I valued it a total about twelve grand. If you had every little piece of thing up in there that I had bought in over the years collected, so and you weren't able to recover anything from no, this, were you? No, they made us leave right away. They evacuated the place, which is good. Right. Um, the really bad thing is they were not good about getting all the animals out. There were people that were gone at work. Um, they just were not there. They come right. home. They're like. Can we get in to get our pets? No, they, they no, they got everybody out as far as they knew, and um, nobody was allowed back in. So we're like, okay, it's just a small two-room fire at the point where it started. It started right. at 10 p.m. I was awoken at 10.15. So there was a fire there one time before electrical, mm -hmm. and two guys were able to put it out that were security guards, and they did it with just fire extinguishers alone before the fire fire even got there. Right. So um, next thing you know, everybody's gone. Um, it's I'm like, all right, well, I'm just going to go have a beer right now and call my nerves. I go across the way, have a couple beers, talk to a friend of mine on the phone. It's like, they'll get this under control. It's a small fire. Sure. You, I was crossing the street. Everybody's out sitting in the parking lot with whatever they could grab at that time. Mm -hmm. Some people, you know, best thing to grab is your animals. Luckily, I did not have any animals there. Um, I'm crossing the way. They have the street closed off. There's a big, you know, truck directing traffic. And there's tons of tourists just standing there filming it. The smoke is bellowing out of the place. Um, I'm, you know, just, oh my God, this is not happening. I, mean, I remember seeing this far on the news. It was, yeah, no, I mean, it burned for it three crazy. days straight, three days, and they couldn't get it contained. I mean, um, so I come back an hour later after having my couple beers. I'm like, oh, it should be done. I go over, they couldn't get it contained. I, I started filming parts of it myself on the, you know, the east side where it had originally started. Okay. You can see it from the Ramada parking lot. And... I just didn't understand. There were just people sitting around, you know. I don't know if they're just like, we can't do anything about it. I mean, it it took till about 5 a.m. till it got all the way to the other side where my room was. Right. Um, I was just sitting there. I was like, oh, my God, there goes everything I, I own. I mean, they wouldn't let anybody back on to get anything. So. Did you seek litigation to try and that's, get your stuff or any that's kind of compensation? That's the problem. When it comes down to the litigation, it seems like no attorney wants to touch this at all. The people claim bankruptcy 48 hours hours before the place burned down and it's supposedly really? oh yeah there was there's so many agencies currently involved that the reports up to 115 plus pages I'm currently talking to the fire marshal um, that actually does the reports and she you know I got the preliminary report and it just said you know 
they were called at this time, they didn't even close the um, actual thing done. Like it started at Sunday, they closed it Friday. That's right. when everybody was off site. And so, I mean, you could still hear fire alarms coming from, you know, the restaurant next door. And it was just unbelievable to see how that had happened. But in regards to the litigation, a lot of people are looking for attorneys and every I attorney wants to turn it down because you know they said that we can't right. handle this litigation. So at this point, so everyone who lost everything can't get any compensation. No, and it's kind of funny because I've called, I was calling attorneys, calling attorneys, you know, everybody can think of, and you know, it seems like nobody else knew what was going on, and right. I was just trying, I want to help, you know, if I can, get an attorney for everybody, get a class action lawsuit, but it's really hard with everything. You have to have receipt, receipted evidence for your property, which I do because I bought lots of stuff off sure. eBay, and you know, I always kept receipts. Unfortunately, they told me I could never insure my place or any of my property there. So that was the downside, and I should have knew. Anyhow, that's what I'm battling right now. That's my raw deal. They uh, basically, you know, they the, the people want to wash their hands of it. They want to forget. It's an LLC company that owns it. It's not just one owner. Right. So they're trying to forget about it. They claim bankruptcy. Um, so who knows? It's like trying to find the Wizard of Oz behind, you know, who's the guy behind the yeah. curtain, like in the Wizard of Oz, honestly. So bottom line is you lost all your stuff. Actually, everyone lost all their stuff. The hotel burned down and 48 hours prior, this hotel had gone completely bankrupt. Yes. None of us knew what was going on until the last minute and we're running out, you know, while the right. place is burning down. So it's sad. Everybody lost a lot of pets property, so much stuff that can't be replaced. You were living there, that was your residence, yeah. so you still didn't get any compensation get, for all of the stuff that you lost. I didn't get anything, lost. and believe me, if there's an attorney that wants this case, I'm sitting here waiting, I would love for them to partake in this. <laughs> well, hopefully believe we can me. help you out. Well, that'd be awesome. LaVon, I appreciate you telling us your story. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now it's your turn. Go to MyRawDeal.com now and vote for which story you think got the raw deal. Will it be story number one? Maybe it'll be story number two could be story number three. The choice is yours. Go to MyRawDeal.com now. Learn protection. Go to SWATTrainingOrlando.com. Want concealed weapons permits? Then go to SWATTrainingOrlando.com. We specialize in bodyguarding, security, mixed martial arts, and much, much more. Get protected worldwide at SWATTrainingOrlando.com. people in the world today, there's always someone getting a raw deal. I'm your new host, Anthony Castaneda. This is Raw Deal, and these are their stories. This deadbeat person turns out to be a law enforcement officer. There's a fire! Get out now! We were at number two with our million seller right under the Beatles. She was saying, I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna screw you so bad. There's nothing but smoke and flames coming from the, that part of the building. I haven't seen a penny off of the sales. It pretty much ruined my clean record. Oh my god, there goes everything I, I own. The industry swept us under the rug. I got the raw deal, pal. That's what I'm battling right now, that's my raw deal. I've had nothing but raw deals. Hey Joe, I'm Anthony. Hey, how are you? Pleased to nice meet you. Nice to meet you Thanks too. Thanks for having me. For telling your story today, we're going to give you this Raw Deal t-shirt. There you go. Right, thank you. No problem, man. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm originally from New York. Uh, what brings you to Florida? Well, my wife's going to be a nurse when she finished schooling and I did the law enforcement department over here. So do you uh, yeah. have any hobbies or anything you like to do? I do fun? wrestling on the side. Well, that's cool. You know, I ended up being a repo agent while I'm being, waiting to be hired on to the police department. Right. And uh, that's how I'm here today. So tell me about your story. What happened? Well, what happened, uh, I'm a licensed repo agent in the state of Florida. I uh, went to go pick up a car every day, usually the same routine, day in and day out. Uh, well, this deadbeat person turns out to be a law enforcement officer. 
So you're trying to get into law enforcement, and now you run into a law enforcement agent. You know, and hey, you know, it happens to the best of us. Right. You know, but this particular officer took it to another level now. Now, why was her car being repossessed in the first place? Do you uh, know? It was for non-payment. So she you know, once you don't pay your bills. She wasn't paying her bill. Her car should have been repossessed. There was no reason why she should get any special treatment, right? Correct. So what happened with her? So I'm driving past her neighborhood, you know, somewhere here in Central Florida. So I see the car coming out of the driveway. I look to the left. She looks at me. She backs back into the garage. So did she know that so, you were coming to get her car? Um, if she darted back into that garage and it closed so fast, you couldn't even bat your eye. That's how fast <laughs> she went into the garage. Wow. You know, but um, it's something that happens every day. Now, mind you, I didn't know she was law enforcement. You, you know, just thought to me, it was another regular person a regular trying to person, avoid you? Exactly. What else is new? You know, exactly <laughs> what happens. So I just made the U-turn, you know, parked on the side of her house, went to knock on the door. Now I have Godzilla just coming at me, get off my property, da 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 da, this and that and the other thing, and I'm like, I'm like six seven. Right, you're just trying you to know, do your job too. Exactly. So she's like five six, <laughs> you know. So she's like yelling at my nipple, <laughs> you know. So I try to be as patriotic as I can to anybody. It doesn't matter right. what the house look like, what type of car it is, you know. I treat everybody the same. She comes up, she says, "I'm a cop. Get the hell now." She's coming at me now. She says, I don't care how big you are. Now I'm You're you know, a the, the big, giant. the big right. Joe guy is getting, oh my God, she's going to kill me or tase me or something <laughs> to this effect. So I get on the phone with the office. They hear her bickering and yelling. So I said, she says she's in law enforcement. So I said, if you're in law enforcement, why are you acting this way? Yeah. You I know, mean, right? there... Yeah. So he says, well, call the cops. Let's find out if she is a law enforcement officer. Now, is that typical procedure when something like this would well, happen? Well, not, it could be with anybody, you know, but she was just being so hard at it, you know, because once an officer says, I'm an officer or a cop or deputy or any type of, you have any ID? Right. You know, my mother could say I'm a cop and she's not, you know, <laughs> even my brother up in New York, you know. Yeah, exactly. So she just refused. So we said, okay, well, let's see. So you called the cops? Yeah. We, we called law enforcement. Apparently she says she's calling law enforcement. So the law, the real, to me at the time, the real, the real police department comes. You know, at that time, I'm next to my truck, just waiting patiently. He comes talking to me. I explain to him everything by detail. I show him the documentation. I show him my license. I have the right to be here. Of course, absolutely. You know? So then he says, well, give me a minute. Let me go see what her problem is. So he comes, goes, a few minutes later, comes out. He says, yeah, she's a police officer. But what, what does that matter if she's a cop or not? She still owes money on the car. Exactly. But this officer that came, he was very nice, very apologetic for her. Oh, really? Yeah, he was like, you know, law enforcement, you know, we're not this way. Don't let her actions base on us. Okay. Every officer is not the same. And I agree, and I understand 150%. So what happened after? So he came? says, well, she's not going to give up the car. You know, you have to try to come another day. <laughs> Stay away from her. He, we exchange telephone numbers. Okay. He says, don't bother her. Don't, don't come here. She's just being nasty. S nasty. Yeah. You know, typical B.I. <laughs> so I call the office. We're not getting a car, blase, blase. And what happened then? I left. So she got away. I said, that day. thank you, officer. Thank you. Have a good day. And never seen her again. Two days later. I get a phone call, oh, go pick up that car, the one with the cop is at a dealership, 10 miles away from her home. Go pick it up at the dealership. Picked it up, no problem, signed the paperwork, did the inventory, yada, 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 simple stuff. Right. End of story. Okay. One month go by, two months go by. And she just hasn't come back for the car? I have no idea. Like, once oh, okay. I bring it in and they it's tag very, it and bag it, I anymore. have, yeah. it's just another person that passed through my life. Right. You know? Five months later, this was in, I think, November, Right after Thanksgiving, a full belly, you know, <laughs> going to my daily routine. Okay. Everybody's not a perfect driver. No one expects you know, it. So I kind of made a boo-boo U-turn in a certain area, you know, another part of Florida, and boo-boo, right. you know, police pulls me over. Okay. Officer, I'm sorry. I know what I did. He says, you have any warrants and stuff like that? If you don't, you can leave. No problem. You know, hey, of course not. Right. Are you talking? Well, you think you have a clean record? I'm, I know I have a clean right. record. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, hello, you know, about to be in law enforcement, Absolutely. waiting. 
he comes over to me, he says, hey, uh, Mr. Ortiz, you have a warrant for your arrest. Oh, jaw drop, you know, stop. I said, I graduated the academy, I'm waiting. This is where I graduated from. Right. This is who I know. This is the department I went into. Never been arrested. Yeah, that's impossible. He's telling me no. So you got arrested? Yeah. How did that happen? After, after I thought it was like a reality show. Huh? Listen, we have to put you under arrest. You're sitting there thinking that, oh, I, you know, yeah. made a simple infraction. This should be no problem. And now, where, where is this warrant coming from? He he says, Joe, I checked, I double checked, because he kind of believed my story. Right. You know, I was throwing uh, department names and this. You and seem that. like a likable you guy. Know. Yeah, exactly. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah, I appreciate that. So they ended up putting me in jail. For how long? I was in there for two days. Two days, and did you get bailed uh, out? Yeah, or? my wife. My I poor wife, at 4 o'clock in the morning. And the company didn't come bail me out. Nobody from the company came to bail me out. But they were aware. They did come to pick up their tow truck. Oh, they just didn't care about you. Which is maybe two miles from the courthouse in the jail where I'm supposed to be bailed out at. So your employer basically left you stranded. Yeah. Wow. You know, I don't know if he knew what was going on. I still didn't know what was going on. Do you, did you ever find out what the warrant was for? Yeah. What was it It for? was trespassing. So how did you get trespassing it? from her house? And when did this all come about that she was able to charge you with trespassing? Don't, you don't know. know. Don't know. So did you get? So I got two days in prison. Okay. I lost the day's pay. I lost the the week's pay because I wasn't working. It cost me to get a lawyer because the company didn't want to pay for it. Of course. You know, company time. You know, legitimate work. They had to take care of it. I'm still in jail. And now, what is in the back of your mind? Are you thinking, I'm never going to get into law enforcement. This is going to ruin my first, life. First of all, I have a, a criminal record. I've never had a one. clean record, right. Never had one, mind you. So what happened, she went back to the department. She was so angry. Now, mind you, earlier I did say, she's going to get you. She was saying, right. I'm going to get you. I'm going to screw you so bad. Did she know your name? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. She knew my name because the officer came, had to get all my information. Oh, they did. They took you know, a, one they officer took a to another officer. Hey, what's his name? Yeah. They, they're going to get it. She went down there and stated, I want him trespassed. As a repo agent, don't you have the right to approach yeah. someone's door and knock on the sure door? Sure you do. I mean, sure you, you do. didn't go in the house. You didn't I didn't climb it. over no fence. I didn't knock down no door. I didn't slim gym no vehicle. You that's basically what we did do. what any other salesperson or Girl Scout would do and knock on a door. Got some cookies. Yeah, they gave me cookies, all right. And then you got slapped with a set of cuffs, and it ruined your clean record. It pretty record. much ruined my clean record. So what uh, are you I up can't to get now? a repo job now. You can't repo. I'm doing taxi work. I picked up a security gig until they find out you have this criminal record. So you really got, you know, got so, the shaft. Yes, I did. This wow. is, I got the raw deal, You pal. got the raw deals right. Yes, sir. Well, Joe, we appreciate you telling us your story. Listen, thank you very much for hearing. No problem. And now it's your turn. Go to MyRawDeal.com now and vote for which story you think got the rawest deal. Will it be story number one? Will it be story number two? Maybe story number three? The choice is yours. Go to MyRawDeal.com now and vote. I'm your host, Anthony Castaneda, and thanks for watching.